okay guys welcome to all uh, on behalf of flying stories uh, there a lot of team is working behind flying stories it's not any more me uh, at least seven eight people are working and uh, a huge amount of organization is going on and they're getting many people from uh, many parts of the country and as well as outside uh, you may see the calendar to understand this uh, so we are going to really make uh, of the best of this uh, close down until 3rd may what we have planned now so we will be also going to plan further after 3rd may in case if the lo lockdown is in progress so today we have one fantastic session which is uh, very very important we all believe and this is proposed by kanan and i have accepted that uh, from her point of view that uh, she has given me three topics this i have chosen um the so today's topic is uh, coming out of the school environment and uh, so i'll start with uh, first of all there are a lot of things we have observed like we all went to same school me kanan sajid vistas a lot uh, many of us and then probably you can see 10 15 of them here in this session so so we know her really really well came as a kid from about 16 17 year old so i want to say something here first of all is about parenting because we are exactly some of us we are exactly at the same age so what i need to see here is first of all when a child is born immediately we we own the child i mean we feel that it's our property you know we start making a lot of decisions on behalf of the child of course it is for the good of her but we often forget that the child has its own mechanism she has her own brains she has her own body she has her own thinking uh, she has everything of her own and uh, they speak we fail to realize this but they speak they think uh, so see there is we, i found a parents here in in uh, mumbai who are very very unique who have given their child the all direction what she thinks is right and now we have uh, kanan takur here i need to speak little bit more about her she went when she was 6 year old to panchgani many of us know that it is panchgani is uh, maharashtra capital for uh, tandem fly so at that time there is lot of lot of uh, even i was inspired by watching in panchgani when she was 6 year old and she took tandem and i don't know whether she remembers that or not but uh, she always had in mind that she wants to take sports as her mainstream in her life and when she was 12 years old and it, it, it's always uh, encouraged by parents and her father takes her to the one of the paragliding schools and she is that you know my daughter want to be trained in paragliding and uh, the school says but the minimum age requirement is 16 years at that point of a time 16 years is minimum right now i think is 14 years guys if somebody is listening to this and if you want to send somebody so uh, send your children so 16 year is four more years later and she was not ready to wait and uh, they convinced the school at least to give her a, a taste of course which the school trains her and uh, she almost completes something equal to p1 p2 but she is not supposed to be certified and she enjoys that course and goes back and after 4 years she comes back again to complete her p1 p2 formally that's when we all met her okay and i really congratulate i really appreciate parents here to support her in such a way and to recognize the child has such kind of a, a, an ability to go in a different way and breaking all the mainstream that it is I I don't believe in our education system to put 30 children in in four between four walls and teach them mathematics. Probably some of them are not interested. Probably they have much more ability than a mathematics or for that matter history or any subject. So, so how many parents really recognize this? I really really appreciate that. So some of the achievements I will introduce here. I will uh, read here. when she was 16 year old she comes for p1 p2 she completes the course she she takes at that age itself as a mainstream and stays in the school almost for more than a year to take it completely whatever can be learned and now we see we see her in 
2018, when Viz uh, organized his first FAI com, and there were 50 of us, and she is one of us, and flying with us for the competition. And not only that, guys, she wins second runner-up women. Give me a second, my other screen went off. So, and after that, she goes out of uh, country and she goes to, uh, she wins the Chabri Open, first runner up women in 2018 and also in 2019. And again, in Khrushchev Open, second runner up in 2018 and uh, second runner up overall and also winner of the women uh, women side, women class. And in 2019, she also wins Ozone, Khrushchev Open, runner up women. Here we have Kanan Thakur. Thank you, Badri. <laughs> so we have uh, totally 11 small, small sections. Uh, we will go three, three sections at a time and we will have a questionnaire. Uh, my first questionnaire is that how do you try to be like, we all know that, you know, a school environment is completely protected and uh, everything is taken care of and that environment is not going to be there forever. Someday you have to make a decision. This protected environment is not going to be there. You have to be on your own. That is independence. How do you manage that coming? How will you become an independent pilot? So I'll start by saying hello to everyone. And so we all know school is there to protect us and like, we've all been in a school and we started there and we learned so much like for example we're taught in a boundary where if you fall off there's always someone to pick you up you're never left alone you're never left without any instructor looking at you but up to a point we all enjoy that after the point every pilot wants to venture out because for example as me i used to see all the you know senior club pilots like badri sajit vizalo they used to come in the cool cars and gears and take out their tandems and fly and they used to do reverse takeoffs at that point i was 16 and i had no idea what is a reverse takeoff like i've only seen instructors and all the club pilots do it and i used to be like why can't we do it like why can't the students do it so that is where my independence journey started like how to detach yourself from school so the first point is becoming independent how how do we do that like you don't suddenly wake up and you're like agile go and you know just take out reverse no you start very basic you start the journey in the school itself because you know agar galti ho gai, toh, someone is there to you know tell your mistake to correct you yeah. So I started with kiting. So I used to see like what is, for example, my first step was reverse. How do you do? Like you kept, you keep kiting because kiting is super important. Like we don't realize it, but it really helps in your flying even when you have like a thousand hours. There's no point any pilot can say ki nahi bas ho gaya, bahut ho gaya kiting. So I started with kiting every day before we could fly up. So I used to fly at Pavna most of the time. Before you could fly up, I used to go down, kite for at least one to two hours because we always went there earlier because students weren't allowed to fly in those strong conditions. So we used to practice that. And what happens with kiting is you learn to take off better. You understand your wing. Like my journey was, I used to tell the instructors, Ki, don't tell me what is happening because they tell you to pull the right side brake or left side brake. You don't learn. When you mess it up and you like, you pull the wrong side and they're like, oh no, this, that is when you register. Your brain will register and you will learn. Yeah. And that was my like experience, like doing on your own, going for it by yourself. And I knew, Ki, okay. If the worst happens, the school is there. And you can challenge yourself. Like, try doing a nice strong wind. When I say strong wind, of course, in the school's boundary of strong wind. Not like 25 kilometers and you go. Yeah. But like, in that boundary, experience it. Try it. 
no be curious that is the first step like if you're curious what is there like there is only so different type of lounge there's cobra there's mushroom style so practice it on the ground you don't have to go to the take off always just be there you know experience then second is landing like we all know like for flying any kind of flying like cross country you need to learn to land in small spaces as well for example like badri was given an example where he saw power lands he had to turn and make it a short landing like how do you build that confidence it doesn't suddenly come to you ki okay i can do it so you have to practice at a local site like at pavna my school used to put a spot out there and try landing either like close to it the closer and closer you will get confidence yeah like keep moving it like once you crack that keep moving it like push your goals here and there yeah. otherwise everyone can land at one spot always yeah. so try push yourself practice it and all of this will only result in becoming independent you will be you shouldn't be told when to take off as well like of course school will always keep you safe and that is their duty yeah. but if you have the knowledge then only you will know and your instructors will agree with you ki okay that is right you should try it and by me telling all of this i am talking about pilots who now have 50 to 60 hours of air time they flown with the school and now they want to spread their wings even more i do not say ki abhi you know crack 10 hours and you start venturing out you can but go slow you meet pilots you learn from them so my first three points are kiting take off landing the most basic points i agree now, now coming to like like the second point of my this is learning to judge the conditions so how many of us like if you go back now like if i go 6 years or 4 years back i did not know how to look at the wind so can be like wind ari hai kaisi wind hai strong hai you only knew when it was fully blowing it strong and it was not there it's fine you couldn't judge in between like i to could i used to wait for my sir to say okay now you can fly but which one of you goes to your sir sits with them and say what are you looking at what are you judging like how can they say ki abhi 5 baje na wind will drop or it will pick up at this point is because they know their locals have done it for years they instruct so sit with them like so you are uh, just let me uh, interrupt you here you said you are trying to say that generally we have tendency that you know the moment we are out of the bus and we have given the prior kit we want to quickly open and be in the air we don't we don't see anything yeah. else i mean this is always said by the instructor okay badri you just sit i let you know yeah they so tell you are trying to you are trying to say that kar rakho aur jab time hoga you can go you are trying to say that when when the instructor says you just sit you wait and that may, that is the time you will have to actually don't sit and wait for the instructor to say okay now you take off yeah. you use that time in understanding why you need to wait is that you mean to say yes that's yeah. what i mean like utilize that at least i have seen and i have experienced like you sit at least for one to two hours at the take off as students because your instructor if you are like on top of your class then you are the first one off and then they tell you so why ask them like even going there sir aap kya dekh rahe ho what are you looking at what is your judgment yeah that is how you know and like of course i mean by personal study as well like you have to put an effort to knowing theory as well because so in quickly, india uh, quickly can you tell me what so what five things have you seen i mean what do you used to observe so i'll tell you about two sites because i used to fly mostly there pavna and tava so initially i could never like i used to go and the sirs used to say ki abhi ek ghante mein hawa aa jayegi or like 15 20 minutes and i used to be like how can you tell hmm. like there's no like coming soon written over there <laughs> you they're judging yeah so i slowly realized that they're looking at the water in front of it mm. and they can see the ripples and i was yeah. like oh wow like we, i didn't know that like yeah. of course later on and small things they knew where the thermals used to be because they looked at the birds yeah. and these are very basic things i'm saying but like because as students we don't pay attention 
Yeah. We only look at that one ribbon to that stick and yeah. we think, ha, hai. Yeah. But how do you judge? Like they can go and they can stand there and tell you ki itni hawa hai, 18 kilometers per 15 kilometers per yeah. Can you, can, can, could I have done that then? No. Yeah. I did not know. So that are the things. Like at Tower Hill, like we used to not, students were not allowed to fly or like weren't because it was bumpy and all that. From 12, like we used to go Maybe. by like 10, 11. At 12, we were all told to land down. So yeah. why? What is the difference? Yeah. Like we used to see some swirlings like this on the takeoff. What are they? We didn't know. But if you ask, the dust devil. But as students, you're told this is not good or this is dangerous. But yeah. actually, dust devils are just the start of a thermal and higher up, it's perfectly fine. Yeah. But as students, we were so scared of it. <laughs> like, yeah. we would, if you see something, you know, but you didn't question it. So my first thing is be curious. Look at others. Because at takeoff, there are so many pilots doing different, different things. Yeah. Like so, someone is taking off from somewhere shallow. Why are they doing that? What, mm -hmm. Why Why did you decide to take off from a launch which is steep or shallow? Ask. Mm -hmm. Because it all depends on the condition. So mm -hmm. that's why it's judge the conditions and learn from there. Can you say something about here? Like uh, tower, we have huge amount of takeoff area. So can you tell me where, like, when did you get to know you have to take from take off from far or from very uh, edge of the uh, of the cliff? So when did you get to know that? I mean, when did you start so, observing something like that? So I used to observe this because if we all saw Tower Hill was you used to have a lot of tandems on Saturday and Sunday, mm. and they used to fly in pretty pretty strong conditions. Like it was very strong. So I used to see them take off, like they used to go very at the edge, like super strong wind, very at the edge. And they used to like keep the glider open, like the leading edge was open in the mushroom. So I used to be like, why? <laughs> why are you doing that? Isn't that dangerous? Because as students, we used to lay it out and be like, you know, if collapse, collapse, you will see it and all. So that's when I asked my son, he was like, because it's easier for us to control. And I was like, but how? If you get collapse in this, he's like, nay, nay, wo to ho jayega. Yeah. Then I asked him, Aap itna edge pe kyu khade ho? Like, why are you taking off? Because in strong winds, you would like to have more area, no? If it's obvious. We all have started. I mean, I personally can tell you, I used to keep at least 20 meters so that I have some space to play. I mean, this is in my mind. Yeah. I mean, I never want to take from the edge, you know? Yeah. Like it is the exact opposite. Like, like it's strong wind. What if you fall off and the wing goes? But at that point, it didn't hit me as much. And then he explained to me, when it's strong wind, you want to be off as soon as possible. Yeah. In weak winds, you need a longer runway. And all that, you know, it's like a jigsaw. It starts clicking. When you yeah. start, like it's also confidence. When you start taking good takeoffs, you make good landings. It all then you start paying attention. Are sir, why can't I go now? Yeah. Then you come to know. Like all our instructors help us to judge all of this. But yeah. when you do it on your own, when you start judging, it makes you an independent pilot. Yeah. Like when you go like abroad, there is no instructor who's going to be there and tell you it's good to take off now. Yeah. To build that confidence, ki, okay, my judgment is right. Yeah. Because I've seen many like pilots who I know, they wait, you know, to confirm from the instructor. They've had 100 hours, but they'll wait if that serves as key. Can I go? Is it right for me? Why can't you judge on your own? Yeah. It's good to confirm. I'm not saying it's bad, yeah. but you can say, this looks right for me. Should I, I'll ask him and, and then you build, you know, confidence. Like you judge, oh, my decision was right. And I'm sure all of us felt that, like as we grew. Yeah. You have to do one or the other day anyway, like better, the sooner you do, the, be yeah, uh, like the sooner you will become independent pilot. Okay, so the next thing is, uh, we, when we are free, when conditions are bad or in rainy season, we read a lot of theory uh, or when we have some break and we read a lot of th theory and we also do a lot of practice. Pra only practice without theory 
doesn't make sense only theory is no not useful how do you balance the, between the, these two so that is the third point practical plus theory so hmm. we've all been like in schools we all have manuals of what a thermal looks like there is a core there is downward draft there is a cloud up you know at cloud base and all the basic basic knowledge we all are given and we all read about it or for another example collapse we all know ki collapse ho gaya wait side mein dalo put some break and control it maintain your trajectory all of that yeah but when you actually do it or when you actually experience it it's only then that it registers in your system yeah otherwise it's as good as forgotten or not knowing like i had read about thermals a lot but when i experienced it it was completely different yeah i did not know like we all say when you enter a thermal you start 360 yeah but how many of all can raise hand and say every time i enter a thermal i got a 360 and i mm-hmm. went up no yeah. like when you end and you're like okay now you have to map it how is it you have to make a mental picture yeah in my head if you look at the theory book ha aise column hai it goes up cloud hai mm-hmm. yeah but it's not true always is yeah. it like where in kamshed do we have clouds that there is inversion yeah but can you really say ki there is a thermal there what are you looking at like if you see carefully there are hay stacks in kamshed which goes up yeah like i didn't notice it for a very long time as to be like ha it's going automatically it's not thermal hawa leke ja rahi hai yeah and then you realize slow because it of course no one is born a great pilot that yes. is the biggest learning none of us were born with this skill no one came out of their wombs and started doing kitek we all learned we all fell we got hurt and we experienced it yeah so theory like my main like what i learned from my experiences when i learned about clouds yeah now in india we do not get many fronts yeah like we don't have warm fronts or cold fronts yeah we don't like in flying sites we don't see them as much yeah so when i had gone to greece and i was doing bruce goldsmith's uh, course we were flying at the side close to an ocean yeah. and there were nice clouds it was perfect you know and it was evening conditions and we were all there and suddenly we started seeing wisps coming from below like yeah. moisture clouds orographic clouds yeah. and at that point i had no idea ye sirf textbook mein sab padha tha kabhi apply nahi kiya never it didn't click and i was like oh it's fine it's fine and they got thicker we weren't told you know go out you know get out of it do not fly in this and i did not know and i was completely fine with it i was like kya hoga i just wish and yeah. soon it was a thick layer of clouds yeah. and there was no breakthrough and scared myself with it yeah it's also because i did not know and i had not experienced any cloud flying till then yeah now in that cloud you know we are all taught big ears and speed bar how many of us have actually applied it yes you need I a put, lot of practice yes i pulled it the other way around i put speed bar and put big ears even though i had read it we all did it because yes. i had not done it we had yeah. not had any practice we only read it in the books but in situations you realize you are doing it absolutely the opposite and i'm sure all of us can relate like no one has done like a textbook ye maybe yeah. then now so that is my thing theory plus practical is very important balance is really important like that is go oh, go ahead like it just will help you like learn and then you can push yourself when you know it of course you know not everyone can experience cloud and not all of us go to greece and all that but to like know before hand like study it and then when it practically happens it's easier like if i did not know so it hit me more hard and then fear comes in yeah so that is an important lesson for all of us like practical plus theory so uh, just give me um, we have a lot of para waiting which is this para waiting is the course for which uh, uh never ever mentioned in any course material but it is a part of it 
and uh, we sit and sit and enjoy it. Tell me what was your most uh, pastime uh, paraviding activity? My most like is it supposed to be funny or do I have to be serious? Supposed to be funny, obviously. But you can if you have used that time for something good, it's fine. No. But it can be funny. Para waiting was always fun because especially on Saturday Sundays because there's to be all these senior cup parades and yeah. they would have like they it was like a show like a soap opera and the worst person smiling I know everyone can see yeah so it used to be highlight yeah. like used to be like kuch nahi ho raha something or else and we make fun like it was fun yeah and most important we used to have fun like we were learning. And someone would be like, "Are you okay? You in the way take off, karo." So we used to learn by them as well. Like we, used, I used to see Viz like take off in strong wind conditions, and I used yeah. to be like, you know, like, "Come stay like pair of paro, pay lagu sir," because at that point it was amazing. Like I did not understand, and then all you guys used to come with your fancy gears and like your instruments and your chali oh chhodo na abhi wo sab aap bhi karoge that's okay but, no, but tell, me what, think tell, me, tell me something but, what is the, what is that one thing you always bought from rangoli before going to take off oh vada pa vada <laughs> pa okay so okay so that's so cool and um, uh, we will take a break here we will take a few questions and uh, guys if you uh, i prefer here Uh, beginners who are still in the school some questions is first preference and the second preference is for uh, people in progression i know uh, i know uh, definitely sajid want to say something here i'm going to give him mic for only only 10 seconds uh, <laughs> okay you you can you can no problem and uh, uh, yeah and rest all questions anybody can ask most welcome yeah uh, you can unmute yourself guys if you want to ask a question except sajid <laughs> Hey, say, 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 no. Yeah. Hey, Karan, okay. Donna, care. Hello. Yes, please. Hi, Donna. Hi. Hey, Karan. I, I had a quick thing which I really wanted to get over. So, say you've got all this digital information available uh, around what the weather conditions are on the takeoff side. You you read them, you study them, and then I've been into a few situations wherein you know, I was the guy who has been held just before the condition uh, went bad. and that 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 one feeling freaks me out because like you rightly mentioned in your mind you try to process and analyze yourself that yeah this is the right time to fly but there have been some instances where in i'm just about to take off and i was been held uh, by the uh, instructor you know i think the conditions have gone bad and it's not the right time to fly and that kind of freaks me out because in my mind i'm like oh if i was on my own i would have taken off and that's what is something i'm battling in my mind how do i get over it so one thing i'll tell you is schools will always like have two step like protection they will not of course they will always be very precautious so if they see anything that's wrong they will tell you no rona wait but what you need to learn is you need to ask them okay so ab kya what is what are you seeing or what are you you know noticing why you're telling me to stop because like i told you I used to fly at Pavna, and like my sirs could see the wind getting stronger. They could see it before the wind hit. So maybe you do not, the reason why it scares you is because you don't know as well. Maybe of course you know weather reports are always. You could read another side that could say something. So you have to take the middle line, and easiest is local knowledge. Like of course your sirs know better. but ask them ki sir aapne kya dekha and sometimes if it's like a very for example sometimes it's good to experience strong winds it's good it teaches you as well so when you are faced with it you can handle it i'm not saying go fly 30 kilometers per hour in wind but i mean expose yourself like sir please give me a chance or like ask them so that will help you as a pilot so you'll also realize it you know like for example you have to tell me why did he stop you like was there when were you fine was it thermic too thermic for you so they know your level as well so they will always judge accordingly does that help like or yeah uh, okay. i think you are right probably uh, 
the i did ask why i was being uh, stopped but the answer wasn't convinced i should have uh, asked more until i got the answer that i was after yeah, yeah. so Good point. like to ask question more like if you just say theek hai abhi aap bol rahe ho then you will not experience anything then you will always be like okay fine and that's why i say that's with that's why you will start depending on your instructors go so it's good that you were like sir this is good for me but if you're thinking so that's a step we all have been stop we've all been told so is that yeah that clear? cool Wanna... yeah yeah that's quite clear thanks kanan thanks thank you. thank you next question anybody okay um guys if you have a question so you can unmute and uh, come up until then uh, i'm going to ask a couple of things to sajid here sajid uh, uh, when we were in school like we all had this fun you know like you know, sitting in the car or sitting in the bus in fact many times i preferred sitting in school bus because uh, there is there is more company of uh, same same level people i mean you can talk something you can ask something are you scared so what do you do this you know a lot of push in interaction that makes you um, much more knowledgeable so i preferred going in bus also many times and all this fun we all had and you would you like to share few things like you know how yours you did it much more before than us um uh, yeah i think uh, the school bus was definitely a good time to uh, get into conversation but most of the times when we were going on the bus uh there was this palpitation about uh, if you're going to uh, tower and what's going to happen sometimes that was a palpitation but uh the fun thing was at para waiting and yeah. uh, para waiting is when you actually share stories and learn and discuss and but you also calm your nerves over there because you're surrounded with friends and um the fun things that we did was uh, just before uh, like we are waiting so tandems would take off first and we would go to the instructors and tell the instructors uh, just as as they had clipped in the passenger in and uh, and they are about to start their take off roll they've got the glider on top they just go and talk to them and say that sir wo kal wala passenger ka apne pair toda tha iska nahi todta and then the passenger would just look at him and it's too late now he has to run now it just tell him sir first flight right aapka pehla flight hai and the passenger just look at him kya aapka first flight hai sir that kind of fun we did but uh, that was because of course the instructors were our friends also and are still our friends but uh, like uh, kanan rightly said that you know learning either in the school bus or at the take off is way higher yeah. than uh, actually uh, you know studying and sharing of experience if you don't share your experience and don't tell each other okay don't go there this is what i had experienced i don't know can you explain that to me or i know what happened later on so yeah. that that really helps yeah so guys uh, one thing you understand when you're going to school the school wants to bring all their pilots back home all the students back home back to the base safe and they will always play safe which is very very important as well and but whereas one has to know how to cross little bit then the line which a school has put school puts a line for all but you should know how to cross that's your own judgment we call that as challenging yourself and i want kanan to explain that yes sir. thanks vatri so challenging yourself like we only like learn if we do something different every day at site like i used to get bored after a while how much can you so like you know you can keep soaring and soaring but what are you learning are you learning anything new are you like improving yourself no like after a point your learning reaches a roof so how do you as a pilot being in the boundaries push yourself as well so one thing which i was told to do is challenge put go to the site and say aaj main ye karungi or i will do this and i will achieve this for example soar or like at pavna or tower you get thermal i'm sorry i've not flown much in chela so this is tower is where i've flown so thermal up go to the highest point you can reach cloud base inversion and then push as far as you can but remember that you want to get back and if you want to continue flying you have to come at a good height mm-hmm. so the more you keep pushing is the more you'll realize oh okay i can make it back i can go further 
and of course uh, like when you're in a school do tell your instructor what you want as well like you have to tell them so i'm getting bored in the air yeah and they'll be like okay do this they will give you the ideas or you can also suggest like the best is you suggesting because they will not be like no you can't do it and if they say that there is a reason behind it so question that as well like i used to be like okay today it's weak wind everyone can you know climb and the winds are nice and solid and everyone flies go in those weak wind conditions like try like scratching of course keeping safe distance yeah but if you keep yourself active in the air you'll also be processing yeah. for example paragliding is all a decision making sport yeah there is no time in the air even now i can be like oh i was relaxing yeah. i was not making any decision like maybe like one second i'll take a break to sip water but you're always thinking you're always making a decision because every flight of yours will depend on this yeah. your actions so that is why challenging yourself will help your decision when you like you know get it wrong yeah. you land early and then you look at others and you'd be like shit yaar but that will register the day you bomb out and the mistakes you meant i'll you I'll, know, i'll interrupt you here for a second and uh, we have one guy who wants to break all rules possible that is uh, we have alok here alok please come in uh um, so this challenging is i think you are the first one to challenge yourself and you know always progress little more progress little more i think probably your uh, two words will help you are you there i can see your name karyan uh, kanan can you karyan let him come back okay yeah so that's my point like for example some days try flying in strong winds try to active pilot like try being in that thermal 5 seconds more yeah like yesterday's topic fear like we also have fear because we don't know about it yeah we're scared of thermal because you just think it's turbulence but no that turbulence will help you fly further more like you'll make distance just because there are thermal yeah so challenge yourself put like make it a point and i'm not saying just in flying you can start with very basic stuff as well yeah like be ready with your kit don't wait for your instructors to come and like you know like sort it out be yeah. confident like start basic if you're confident in like basic things yeah. you'll be more confident to make those bigger decisions yeah i want to go venture on that side of the tower or i want to go a little bit further than that pavna bridge of course be careful <laughs> you there is venture there is rotors don't be stupid don't like challenge yourself so much ki i have my next question on that like you have flown a lot uh, mm -hmm. in in pavna and uh, most of your education like even ours like is is between pavna and tower tell me something what changes suddenly when you go to a new site i mean you have learned a lot okay this is my this where i can go this where i can't go this where the wind comes this the conditions all is fine that you made your own book in your mind excellent and now when you go to a new site what will happen just tell me that so i'll give you my example when i went for the first time in beer billing yeah it was completely different <laughs> there was no wind the take off style was different i had to do a forward take off yeah and the landing was like you know pavna you can see the landing you can approach it as you go and mm -hmm. the height you don't have to lose height you don't have to do anything to yeah and it's not thermic Yeah. So I used to wait in beer. I used to wait for a long time and look at people go take off. Yeah. And I used to wait if you all have been to beer, the take off is like this, like this. It's like it's like a roller coaster ride down. Yeah. If somebody is sharing their screen. Please don't share your screen. If you have a question, please uh, put it there in the comments. We'll call you. Thank you. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay. So. i waited for a long time i was like no no i will wait when all those you know xc pilots are gone yeah. and i will wait when it's all clear and i can run off because i was new i yeah. was told you know how thermal is there when you go there you'll get a thermal and i was like yes yes i'll do this and first you know you'll go we'll wait for 4 seconds like kelly farina says and then you turn in it yeah 
and i went in that thermal and it shook me and i just froze and went to the landing okay because i had not experienced 2 meters per second yeah there was no where i had experienced 2 meters per second yeah and i was like nay nay something is wrong i'm not going to do this and i went for landing then the next day i was like no now you have to like go on come on you cannot be scared challenging so, yourself yeah so i was like okay i'll try taking one full turn one full proper turn yeah. and then i'll go like i'll i'll go home go for, go for landing yeah okay and i kept doing that like slowly slowly you know you push yourself you get over that fear and when you say new sights beer is very overwhelming like for me who had not flown any altitude like just give me one one second we'll continue i'm sorry to interrupt yeah. we have one question from gaurav gaurav can you switch on your mic and come in yeah 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 hi badri hi kanan uh, hi gaurav uh, so uh, my question is um, see every every pilot who uh, goes through a school uh goes from p1 to p3 and then progression so i i heard someone in in yesterday's webinar that there was one pilot who said uh, he hasn't got any formal training he hasn't got any siv he is a kind of self learned guy but he has progressed so much so my question is does that make really a difference i mean most of the pilots who are being nurtured by the school taken care of by the senior pilots um given uh, you, you know whatever there's needed on the other hand we have another pilot who hasn't uh, been nurtured in a traditional way so uh, does that make a difference or no so like my answer to that is i was nurtured into a school but like the pilot who had the opportunity was it so anyways you learn like it depends what your goal is so if you want to soar of course it's a bit dangerous when you don't know you don't have anyone guiding you so at that point there wasn't anyone you know my point is at that point whoever the pilot was he did not know what to do he was he was basically a pioneer so he was the first person but now you have the opportunity with like flying stories and all these senior pilots to get their experience ask question so you do not repeat the mistakes they have already made you know you have the platform i'm not saying you are you know trying to do this i'm saying for anyone who feels ki i don't have a school so i should do it on my own no if you see a local pilot if you see someone from the stock at a you know a uh, site you can go and ask them ki listen i am feeling this like what is your thought that's how i started like i used to go and ask all these people like hey have you did this or oh, what what is this wing because you don't know so once you ask and like question and that's how the guy who you know didn't have a school started he also questioned others like paragliding is fairly a recent sport so everyone at that point is still learning even now we're not you can't say ki abhi you know evolution is not going to happen yeah. so there are techniques that are changing so you can say you can always be in a school if you want or you can you know join platforms and ask questions so there is now a difference and now an advantage to being a pilot even without a school you can learn without being in a school but it just how you how confident you are like if you are fine with not being in a school perfect yeah so we will uh, just listen to an opinion on this uh, uh, from sajid sajid can you come in thanks uh, badri uh, gaurav i want to uh, answer that question after kanan has uh, explained to you um, i just want to clarify that uh, the person who said that was uh, vijay soni and vijay soni is on the india team and these are the people who have actually um, started paragliding these are the people uh, all our instructors people who who run the schools these are the people who actually came to kamshed and found kamshed found flying sites uh there were no schools around for them for them to learn they learned on their own because there was no choice for them uh but i would say that if you have a possibility in today's time to learn from their experience and from their knowledge under a safe environment i think you should take that and that would be the safest choice to go about and uh, grow in this sport thanks 
Yeah, I agree. Uh, thank you, for, uh, Sajid, for that. I agree completely here. Um, you have a, a proper path to follow or you have some kind of a shortcut which you think is probably will probably take you to a, a super positive side to an advantage or completely it can leave you in some in, in some disadvantage. So it is your decision, but we prefer going by the road which is already established by someone. Uh, Can I Karan, say something? Yeah, Vijay Sony is here. Uh, so nice. Yeah. Your video is not coming uh -huh. up. No, I'm putting it off. So. Oh, okay, you can switch on. Yeah. See, uh, this is not a shortcut. This is a long cut. Yeah. Uh, what you are people are achieving in a couple of years, that we have achieved in seven eight years. It takes seven eight years. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but you also you have to study by yourself. And also, you have to be lucky. Yeah. It's not only the your skill. And that's how you grow when you don't have anyone to teach you. Yeah. And we have done the long distance cross country also without reserve. All my HIV, like Kanan was talking about getting into the cloud and doing all the big years and the speed bar. That you all we have read in the book and uh, done it first time in the cloud base at 3000 meter. And stepping step by step from big years and speed bar then first time doing practically B line just by reading and not not even YouTube, not even something not watching. on the YouTube, just reading and assuming how it will behave. Yeah. And done the things which have uh, said not to do uh, above a particular height. But that a different level of confidence. But I'll tell you also my first four hundred flight will be maybe the top to bottom only. Yeah. That 400 okay. flights, 400 flights. Yeah, 400 yeah. flights, maybe top yeah. to bottom, one minute, one and a half minute, two minutes. Yeah. I have my law books and everything. <laughs> so it's lots of patience, lots of patience. Yeah. And then you reach that level. But nowadays, there's no patience in the pilots, like uh, all the newcomers. They want to grow just within a couple of years, like uh, IT industry going so fast. That's my couple of bits. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so thank you Vijay for that. And uh, is Alok is here? Alok? Yeah, so. Yes, yes. Yeah, okay. Can you. Put Sorry, I had office, uh, office a call like that. No worries. So, right now, Kanan is at, you know, uh, challenging yourself. So, I said, like, you know, the best example challenging yourself is none other than Alok. Because see, you have to challenge and that's the only way to progress. We have to put yourself a little bit out of your comfort. That's when you will progress. And you are the first person that was challenged a lot. Can, would you like to share some experience on that? Can you switch on your video? Would you like to? Hello? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, um, yes, if, if, uh, from that aspect, you, in order to challenge yourself, it comes from the hunger that each and every individual has. No, I mean, what, how they look at the, how they look at this sport. I mean, everyone wants to wants to learn, but learn for what? If it is only, is it only about flying? Then flying. Then next, next what? Is it about cross country? Then next what? Is it about any other competition? Then next what? So it is. Uh, it all depends on uh, what. Where do you want to go? And then how do you lay a roadmap for it, for yourself? Yeah. And uh, so the journey starts from there. And um, everyone, like Vijay said, and also Kanan said, everyone has uh, different resources given to them. And if you are good enough to understand what, your res what resources you have and how you will utilize it to maximize... Uh, um, the gains and that's a better way to challenge yourself instead of saying that okay I'm not able to do this because I don't have these 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 things but all of us have something or the other in order to reach our goals yeah and I think this is the journey that we went through yeah. uh, we slowly realized okay okay this is what we want to do and what are the uh, resources given to us for example um, why was why, why did punch why did I make Panjgani as my uh, hotspot to do because that was the easiest thing for me to be able to execute from Bangalore. Mm. Okay. 
and uh, and that way i could see okay if panjgani is becomes my hotspot then what are the things i can do around it i mean what what are things i can practice around it and uh, that kept on uh, working on i mean on that on those aspects if if we keep working on every one of us figure out this, this these are our uh, resources and this is how we would uh, go ahead and then it's easier to challenge within within the framework that we have because it's really important to get at least first get comfortable with what you have and then you start expanding your uh, uh, um yeah the, the slowly you ex, uh, the sooner you get comfortable uh, the sooner you'll be able to challenge to new new things slowly slowly yeah so i think that, that was my journey overall in terms of challenging and and goals are all depends no i mean um be it any any competition or be it any uh, xc the distance they differ to each and every individual yeah but really yeah, so. i just like to step in just to add to uh, alok's point to give an example of what he just said he's just going beating around the bush but to really give an example uh we were flying together in beer and i was uh, obviously had more experience in flying than uh, alok and alok i have actually seen alok do p1 but at one point of time when i went and landed in beer Al- alok was at the house thermal and plus one for more than 4 hours yeah just going up and down up and down he just stayed there now who does that yeah that shows that hunger and he shows the challenge yeah to stay in one place and up your game like for me it was easy okay i didn't like it or i finished it i just went and landed but when i saw alok do that a new guy who comes and who's younger yeah that also helps other people up your game you have yeah. to look at what what he's saying and what kanan is doing at such a young age yeah. that's an example as well so to Thank add you. on this like yeah. just because we're on alok so i will also praise him <laughs> so i was at nice. the school and very beginning like i had not just like you know i was venturing i used to think you know pavna ke lake ke upar pahunch gaye to kitna like i just few you know here and there and i remember very clearly alok had come i don't know where like beer say it come and he was talking about this 100 km flight he had done and my dad and me was sitting and he was going on about you know soa soa and I, we were so amazed like we were like oh you can fly 100 km <laughs> i had no idea like so all like everyone puts like he was the first person i thought oh you can do distance with that i did not know i of course had like read but he was the first person i had seen who had done 100 kilometers that's yeah. nice like yeah yeah is really push one one ex- quick example of him i'll tell you that you know how to push limits he is the guy we have we have together done p1 p2 so i know a lot about him uh, so he is the guy used to come from bangalore on friday evening to come for, to fly for two days sometimes he used to take uh, monday to come on friday evening sit in the bus get down at panchgani Uh, and uh, fly saturday sunday and go back he has done this every week consecutively and he is the guy has cracked panchgani inside out along with the partnership of uh, which and sometimes me as well kanan um, we'll go further so we are in uh, we are in like you know new sites and uh, uh, new courses i mean how to deal with the new sites a whole thing will change so and also here somebody is asking one very nice question Uh, even in i i went through this is that uh, when you don't have any instrument uh, this is uh, who is asking this question one second is is navin ravi is asking this question when you don't have instruments when you go into the air first of all we have lot of things to take care of how do you remember the direction where is east or where is north or south yeah carry on so that was really like the hardest part because yeah. you see the sun like for pavna it was west so that was easy but the hardest was tower yeah like for example navin to answer your question forget have not having instruments i used to have an instrument i would still not be able to like you know feel like are kaav there was many times when i did not know and i would ask and that is when you start knowing like navigating for me came in very later because for a long time i was in my local site like i did not venture out like the only time i went out was after 80 hours of flying in my local site yeah so i was very new and coming to that i have like the first time 
I ever did an XC was in Beer and with Viz Baba. Yeah. So and that is such a fond memory is because that was like the second time I was there. Yeah. and we had just started like you know i used to get thermaling it was easy for me to like thermal now so i could every time i was there i was like cloud based i could do it yeah. and then one day this comes and it's like what is this nonsense you're just you know on the take off fridge why aren't you pushing yeah so he told us ki tum log mere tum log mere channel pe aa jao and i will take you yeah and badri and all of y'all it was the best flight i had had Yeah. He guided us all the way to Red Temple, and yeah. now at this point, you be like, "What is Red Temple? You can just glide." Yeah. But it took us full two hours. He had to like literally be like, "Chalo, you have the height." We were so nervous, yeah. but that boosted my confidence. I was like, "Oh my god, I can fly! I can do that distance!" Yes. Like he was the one who pushed me, saying. and many like there were few other club pilots as well and he was like no no you have to do try it and i thank him because the next time i had the confidence to go on my own i was like oh i've done this yeah and the second time like for my example is new sights will always scare you like for me it was very scary like beer because at this point i was outside my school you know protection i had gone all by myself i was there i had no one to guide me. so all i would do was like thermal 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 yeah red temple because that was the easiest you can like land out wherever yeah and the most i had gone was like i took a decision ki dam pe jana hai and then i was like nee 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 but i remember this clearly i was there with rajiv pandey and if you are here hello yeah so he's not he here, was there think. Okay. Yeah. So he was like, "I'm doing this one-on-one session with Debu, and why don't you come? Because he had got a new like BGD base, and he was like, 'You come with us, and it's fine. You just like stay with us if you can.' So of course I couldn't match up to their, you know, <laughs> experience. And they went super fast to Dam, and then they went to Big Bear. So I was like, 'Okay, I'll go with them. I'll be like nice and easy.' And I went to Red Temple. and i took the plunge to go to dam i was like no no i'll try because i knew like those guys were there and whatever happens i still have someone mhm and we did that we came back and i was super happy like dam ridge at that point was like happier than my 100 km flight i was more happy than i was like when i did 100 mhm and then they book comes on the radio and he's like do you want to go east yeah and for me at that point there was no east in beer it did not exist in my maps there was yeah. like night the yeah. beer side jana ka udhar nahi jana yeah and he was like no no it's very easy you come along it's very fine and then yeah. rajji was like i don't want to come so he, me and debu were like no we'll push yeah went to train station all the way it was fine like we thermaled and went and then on the way back he tells me just hug the terrain and come you okay. don't need to thermal at all and first i laughed i was like ha this you know they booch was re all that and he is going to surf and on his lovely wing and yeah. i was like mera bus kuch nahi karega yeah. but i was like nahi nahi you know listen to me i hugged the ridge and went and after a point when you come to minus 1 it like the elevation goes up right so when you cross you can't see and i was scared i was like i can't see anyone there was not that many it was in spring season as a well. but i pushed through i was like no no i have to go i don't want to you know break out and land i want to get to the main landing field yeah. and like i did 35 kilometers that day i was out of school all on my own i found my way to rajiv and debu and since then i did not look back i was i overcame that because i had some people to guide me. so my other point is if you're willing and Q- if you're curious everyone will help you Oh, here this is to just ask here just we have ask. we have uh, actually rajiv here rajiv can you come in rajiv can you hear us hello he is muted oh one second yeah please would you like to add to that flight experience yeah can you hear me now yes clear yeah hi Ar- hello yeah i remember that very well kanan had come there and Uh, I was uh, flying with Debu that time, and 
uh, I think I had a st- I had a bad stomach. So uh, so we we did that flight up to Damaris, and on the way back, when Debu said uh, let's go east, I had gone already uh, on an earlier flight. Yeah. And, uh, th- that uh, flying on the ridge on the way back is actually called uh, Debu's Express. Uh, I think it co- he calls it his Express Line or something. Okay. So you can just you can just keep keep flying on the ridge, then you, you go wherever you want. So yeah, that was a great uh, experience. I think after that we also had a trek, got stuck on takeoff ridge for about six hours in yes. a hailstorm. Great fun. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Rajiv. Thank you. Okay, uh, so Kanan, uh, uh, I would like to ask um, a little bit about the equipment now. Can we move on there? Yeah, that's okay. the next one. Yeah. So, um, what is it like? The, initially, we all went with the hired equipment by the school, and uh, um, we have really enjoyed multiple wings. And you generally develop uh, some sweet spot for a particular wing and a harness. And uh, since we a school being the school, obviously, like whoever has book first will go go to it. You won't get always what you wanted, but of course, some equipment is always there. It makes you think that you know. I think I should have something of my own so that you know it is guaranteed. I always fly with that wing. So, what exactly? What way to go for the equipment here? So, like equipment the first you know when we initially buy any glider or we're investing our money we always like i bought my glider when i was with the school so they recommended this is good this is good for your level and i totally agree with them they suggest you because you're a kids you're like getting into the arena you made those you know the cycle with the side wheels but eventually you want to take those pedals out and you're like no i want to accelerate but how many of us bought money even when we were buying the first wing put research into it yeah. how many of us sat down read which glider are we buying what does it do what are the features okay you don't understand all of it at first but for example i got um wing uh, so you know wing i got nav uh, flymaster nav sd like that was the first like instrument i'd ever bought and yeah, i still yeah. use it i think it's the best investment but for a year i was flying it just for the beeps i did not know how to make use of it yeah i had no idea i was like ha ye se upar jata hai kuch the altitude i never put in the research because i never understood it and then i was like are what do i need it for i was not flying xc i was just in like soaring yeah but the very very first time i actually realized what this instrument can do was at panjgani open 2017 yeah and we were given a task i had never seen any competition task i was like what are these waypoints how yeah. do you get them on and that's when alok he was like you have this instrument for how long and he was i was like one year and he was like and you tujhe aata nahi hai and i was like no i do not know anything about it so he sat with me and he took me through all of it he yeah. told me how to put it in i don't know if he remembers but he sat he was like this is a waypoint this is the entry exit cylinder la 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 la, la all of that and he went to the extent he told me this is my screen so i did not know you could modify your screen like you can put what you want to see and modify them like if you want to see glide to goal or your altitude or time and all those how to change the utc i did not know and he sat with me for one and a half hours and he showed me this is this this is this so yeah. this is for example this was my experience you yeah. don't have to be like this you could be better like i did not know i was 17 and i was like I don't know how to do this so I'm not going to put effort I'll yeah. just fly without it Sometimes I would fly even with the vario being there on the desk and me not switching it on because it wasn't I could not like do it Yeah I was so scared that I could not take my hand off and put it on so It was another task We will uh, ask uh, one person who is uh, you know who does extreme uh, um, research before buying something and it's our own friend uh, rohit uh, rohit please come in and add few words of your you know how to select equipment and particularly when you're just getting out of the school 
Uh, Wait, if you can hear us, yeah. Yeah, I can hear you. And my friend say Uday has a famous line. There's a budget he allocates called Rohit Se Dosti Kya Budget. So <laughs> it's a bad company and a bad habit. So yeah, a bit of a gadget guru uh, and just a kida to keep learning about the instruments that I even don't own, unfortunately. So maybe my just like Uday's packing hours are more. My research hours are more than my flying, really. <laughs> But uh, yeah, that, that's the kind of person that I am. Um, so if you want a quick answer for what instruments to buy, uh, I can give a very short one. To each level, uh, you can buy a different uh, level. No, I, I'm, I'm, I'm particular here is that hmm. you have a lot of confusion. You're too young, in, at least in terms of like, your paragliding experience is too young. And uh, you want to buy something, you have limited budget. And there are a lot of confusions. How do you really decide something? Yeah, I mean, of course, okay. instructor can give you some idea, but what is yeah. beyond that? Yeah. So let let's look at if you are an early pilot, and someday you have an ambition to at least learn cross country flying or thermal flying, let's say. So choose an instrument which has minimum GPS in it. You don't need all the competition features if you're not much into the competition and so on. Some of the instruments even allow you to software update. Uh, the competition features uh, later point in time, uh, but the GPS functionality in the Vario will allow you a couple of key features in, which are very handy in early days, uh, which are uh, the last known thermal, last known stronger part of the thermal or uh, the wind strength, depending on if you are doing a 360s, it can keep showing the wind strength and that which is quite accurate in in beer billing where we are thermaling a lot in circles rather than uh, haphazard but uh, in you know uh, calm shade or some place like that so i would say start with the gps because that's one instrument unlike your harnesses or wings you will keep for much longer kanan bought her first instrument when she just started flying and now she's accomplished competition pilot and still she could use that. She doesn't have to change it. But that, that was a clear goal. When she started, she wanted to get into that competitions and so on. That was a perfect for her. So for others, I will say at least get an instrument with a GPS built into it. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Kanan? So I totally agree with Rohit. Like, you know, think forward as well. Like my another topic is wing and harnesses. So my first, of course, harness, I did not go for pod. I went for seated and I did not do any research. There was nothing. I bought the first thing I was told. I, you know, got a reserve, all of that. But I later realized that the reserve handle had a defect. Like the oxygen to ozone had a reserve handle defect. It was too long. And I got to know this after flying it for a year. I was totally unaware of it. But that was like a shock for me. I was like, how can I be so stupid? So when I decided to buy and invest in a pod, I was like, I'm going to buy something which I completely know. And I'm going to use it for a very, very long time. So paragliding equipment is very expensive. It's not cheap. You can't just misuse it you can't keep it like it's another bag it has to be well taken care of so yeah. buy something which like like for example the harness i fly genie light it has a pod skirt which you can take it off and make a seated harness if you're a budding pilot and you want you think you want to do xc and you want to you know venture out into comps and you want a pod you can buy this, like buy it because you can take the skirt off and slowly adjust to flying a pot. And if you don't, that's completely fine. But know what you're buying. Do not blindly buy anything because if you're scared of your wing, it does not like help. Your flying will get affected with that. So There's, once yeah. uh, you, you're saying that, you know, know what you're buying, I have a question for you, Ariel. Knowing what you bought, that is understanding your wing, understanding your harness, and other things. How do you go about this, and how how do you put how do you understand your equipment, knowing your equipment? So for me, the easiest was talking to all the club pilots. 
like like for example yesterday one of the pilots was saying oh, i wish to be in the group and i was like you don't need to like be friends with everyone you can become friends ask them like if i have to talk about gadgets we all know who to go to rohit we know what he will say like you can ask them how to keep this what should i look at yeah and with even gliders like for example i flew a buzz at 4 which was i bought it as i got out of a school yeah and that was you know of course the school will always suggest the best option and safety first but later on you want to venture out but you don't want to take too much of a step and you don't want to take too little of a step you want somewhere in the between so how do you find out because now there are so many gliders with the same performance so we had a talk with ziad and you could read his reviews you could ask all these pilots like they zalog sajid batri all of them rohit ki what do you think or even more like avi and all of them ask them ask your instructor tj what do you think about this should i go for this this is my plan and think a bit forward like after you get 50 hours on the wing you shouldn't feel like it's holding you back get somewhere where it's challenging you as well and then you know you can push further with it as well And so one, no what is one is buying i'm asking is that we already bought okay you bought the bus you bought you bought the harness so now how do you understand your equipment very well where it's like yesterday i was saying like it's buying a new uh, driving uh, learning the new car so now you got into the car you learned the how do you just get familiar to all your controls and how they work you no know, it's such kind of a thing how do you get to understand the equipment so the first time i got the bus it was very like crispy new and i was like you have to go and kite it that's the best way of knowing your wing initially yeah. because you are scared of it we all have a fear like even now when i get a new wing i'm like first let me play with it let me see the brake pressure you come to know like kite it for a bit i'm not saying don't just kite it it's bought for flying but slowly ease into it like for example i did all you know like big gears and all of that on another wing but when i had to do it on my own new wing it was scary like i was like no no kuch ho gaya to so you have to ease yourself like take on your first flight just do a top to bottom if you're scared if you're pretty confident you know what you've got then you take a soaring flight you know try a little thermal try like you know taking 360s try like you know weight shift wing overs and look at your glider physically like look at it what is different because all our school wings are very different they're either a or very low b so tell me something understanding in this way and otherwise going for the extreme which we call it is siv so what is the difference i mean like like all doing doing these small small things and understanding your equipment and suddenly putting yourself under your wing to the greatest test uh, which is siv how about that so good point madri so siv is is very very good like for me the best thing i did was siv like it cleared out my fear of stalls like i know all of us as pilots realize ki Oh my god if i put full brakes that is the glider is going to stall but actually in siv you learn it's not a bad thing like as a young pilot i was like no never pull full brakes or never if you get a collapse you have to like systematically arrange it but no like you have to ease into it know your wing in those different like know your wing when it comes front over your like nowadays we have such good technology that it does not collapse so you feel it's going to collapse but when your wing goes there you realize oh it didn't do it you'll realize how safe it is like siv teaches you so uh, like your confidence goes like a peak it's not a flatness you realize when you go over that bay and you're pulling those maneuvers you're pulling speed bar full frontal full speed bar full frontal you'll realize oh my god like my wing is so much safer than i used to think and like yesterday we came to a point where sajid was saying you know one siv does not mean you know everything yeah like for example when you pull a collapse 
in SIV. It is not at all same the way it happens in real life. Yeah. It's not going to tell you and come ki ab main collapse ho raha, body is side all that. Okay. It does not. Yeah. So it is a huge difference. Like you have to personally like. I recommend or I say to if you want to like build your confidence and you want to step a wing, like not every year, but if you want every year, do SIVs. It yeah. will boost your confidence so much because you will not fear those small things. For example, me, I was off landing at Panchkani. And I had done the basic, you know, collapses, like not full SIV, but those basic, you know, you pull it and keep. And I was like, kya collapse, you full, you know, we'll handle it and we know all the textbook. And I got a 40% collapse coming in for top landing and punch kane. And my biggest mistake was overreacting to it. The collapse didn't hurt, like do anything. I overreacted and I swung like into a crash landing. Luckily, I was PLF style. It hit my side bump and all of that. But that's when I realized most of the incidents happen because the pilot is overwhelmed by what has happened. You don't, a collapse for any pilot is very differently handled. Like for very beginners, they will yank the brake. Hey, Even 20% collapse because they have, they feel itna, you know, in their head. So tell me something. Tell me that first couple of things you did after SIV and you noticed the big difference. So the first thing I did after SIV was realize that I need a new wing. <laughs> Achha, the, the one you did it on is not your wing? No, I it was my wing. Okay. And I had flown it and all of that. But I had flown it for now 100 hours when I did my SIV. I did SIV very late. Okay. So before I done, it was really like already, you know, I had collapses. But I had not stalled it. I had not sat in it. Yeah. I did not, like, for example, even acro was a very long subject after that. But to, like, there was fear, you know, like, yeah. every that fear of unknown. Everyone has that fear. So I wanted to go and do it. I was like, before I move to a wing, let me see if I can do this. Like, I used to watch everyone ka stall videos and I'd be like, how on earth are they, you know, falling off the sky and being completely in control? Hmm. So that led me to, nah, I want to do an SIV. I will go and do it. And then I went and flew and beat. And that, Badari, I was so confident. Like I, yeah. if I got a collapse, it was okay. I knew my wing was safe. Yeah. I knew it was not going to do what, you know, all we see those videos. It's not. Like, of course, it's not going to like, if it collapses, you have to put input. But when it's those basic wings, we feel ki kya hoga. Mm. But like that helps you to know ki your wing is actually your friend, not your enemy. That exactly. is what SIV does. And that exactly. is why I recommend and say do it. Like if you can manage at least one on your wing every time you buy it, it will help you fly so much better. I understand. So tell me something. Many of us, we go to SIV. But we go with a mindset that I'm going to do this, that, and all that. But uh, many of us also won't do. Okay. The reason is, it's not easy. I mean, like the, my instructor says, Badri, okay, you hold the, your right side uh, risers and uh, hold the entire all lines into your hold and bank it. I mean, like, so, wo aata hi nahi hai. first of all, aata hi nahi. Isliye, dar hai. Kuch to ho jayega. and it is also strong enough. This is uh, this is very big confusion. How, how did you go through this? How did you manage to go through so, all that? That's a, like, I clearly missed that point, but that's such a good point. So I will say the first time I went to do an SIV, it was in Turkey. And everyone who's been to Turkey knows that it takes six minutes to seven minutes to get to that the box. box. And the pura energy goes away. You are drained. You're so like, height and... and especially when you're doing SIV, like the first time I was there, I was like, I just want to get it over. With. It yeah. was like, I just want to go there, do all my maneuvers and just sit on the beach. Okay. But that was me. That was 
So the first time, the first task in like the SIV course I did was basic. Take your full A risers and yank them down. Yeah. It is so simple. <laughs> and when the time comes, you're like, nahi hoga mujse. that six minutes are killing you. You're like, nahi, nahi, nahi. And just my advice to you is just pull it. I mean, just uh, I also feel here is trust your instructor. Yes. Think whatever he says, you just do it, right? Just, yes. Just listen to him <coughs> and pull it. Yeah. Like that, that one time you pull it, you will like your confidence will go 100%. And then yeah. he'll just be like, do it again. It's not like, like, you know, for example, Sajid was saying you do it once and you don't get it. That's why yeah. they tell you, keep doing it. Yeah. Just go over it and just do it. Just keep doing those front. Loops. And yeah, I would, I would like to hear, ask a couple of people because guys, SIV is one, uh, one, one course, which is uh, very expensive, particularly when you go abroad and uh, when you don't do all the things, it, it only doesn't delay your progress. And also you're losing a lot of money to, money to go back and invest again, even in, uh, in, even in India, it costs a lot. So a couple of people, please come in volunteers and give your views on SIV to do it in a better way. Uh, Badri, can I come in? Yeah, yes, yeah, I have recently done my SIV uh, just in Feb, and like I got my wing last year and flew just uh, 15, 20 hours, or, sorry, 25 hours. Then after that, yeah, after because of this, all this community now we have and you guys or like everyone the materials yeah. available online which side, or something. Which, which side did you do? Bilaspur. Okay, so can you give me your experience and did you do all the steps easily? Uh, yes, but think that that's what I wanted to cover. Yeah, some part is whatever Kanan or you mentioned, like sometimes uh, like not doing it. Mm -hmm. uh, somewhere I felt that, but in some part in the first day, like I was pulling it more. For mm -hmm. example, the, the whenever we are doing the I guess I remember the when you were tell, uh, my instructor told like uh, pull the air risers like I pulled it so much I should mm. leave it but actually I was pulling it and keeping it okay so but yeah whatever you guys said is very correct you should totally believe on instructors and yeah totally do it then only you can realize okay what what's happening and yeah uh, it's not only like uh, sometimes okay you will be having the checklist in your mind or in the course okay have to do these things it's not only that you have to really do it and like satisfy your mind not only instructors or the list whatever is there you have to do you have to satisfy yourself your mind telling that okay okay i have done it and i can see like okay what's happening to the wing like uh, who, how it's reacting so how to recover or like what are the steps so those things yeah you have to do it like sometimes maybe uh, two, three times or sometimes it may be 15, 15 times. It depends on like personal level. Yeah. Yeah. That's my opinion. Like one point Sajid just told me was when you do this SIV course, you come to know the energy of your wing. Yeah. Like, and like that is so like. Yeah, he wants to say realize, something, I think. When is that? Sorry. That will continue. Yeah. Get back. No, no. Uh, the collapse thing uh, Kanan was talking, uh, talking, right? Yeah. Because yeah, one thing is collapse. We are inducing, and one thing what happens like, uh, like when we are in the air, we don't know what because both the thing can happen in uh, my SIV. Like once, like I induce it, but while coming down, while doing a wing over, uh, like almost a little bit uh, like near to ground. So suddenly somewhere, like I don't know what was the reason. It is happened. Collapse, collapse happened. So then, like luckily, yeah, landed safely, and yeah, maybe I didn't. Overact. I would, actually I saw the wing, which said it was happening. It took a full one round. Then after that, then maybe I did little until that time I was almost near the ground. I landed, oh but it was God. safe. But thing is that yeah, uh, that's a much difference. And those things yeah, it will come based on experience and how much you fly. Thank you, thank you so much. Yeah, Kanan. So no, that's it. Like SIV is a must. It's. Mm -hmm. Uh, like yeah. that's one thing I'll say. Ki so tell me, pilot should do. Here, uh, um, once you do SIV, once you have done 50, 70, 50, 70 hours, and uh, 
once you have gone to 20 30 kilometers now there is something called confidence it keeps coming and obviously you know now you know a lot of things i mean i know how to go 100 kilometers on the road and now this confidence sometimes grows into a little more better and then that becomes overconfidence so when do you know am i confident or a overconfident so i don't think the person comes to know it's the friends who mm-hmm. come to know so that's a point i was going to cover is there's a fine very 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 fine line between confidence and overconfidence and that is very hard for you to realize yeah. because you feel you're doing everything right you're pushing yourself you're going out there but as a friend if i see someone who's like oh my god take a step back you are going too far like if tomorrow i go and i buy an mantra or i go and buy a super cc wing that would not be safe because i have not flown i do not have that much experience to handle them and that is only you know coming to a point ki there is going to be an accident for example my instructor used to say if you are 99.9% safe that 0.01% will catch up to you very soon yeah like it will come and there's this line which kriegel used is just because i am excel six times winner red bull excel does not make me immortal yeah tomorrow if i make a mistake it's going to be my bone which is going to break it's yeah. not my like competitors so yeah. do not think that you are superior because when you reach that point you think i know everything i hope you are here to tell us ki i learned from that mistake because it is a very dangerous area to be in and it is to see a friend over there if you're there we have to help like if you're there just take a step back calm yourself down think don't sometimes i feel we overreact and we start overcoming or like you know covering it with fear yeah it is so it is that, actually it's actually you're pushing more than what you can handle and uh, then you automatically get into the fear and then obviously that you know something which is supposed to be quick will become slow automatically yeah. so i would here i would like to ask um, uh, openly to the people that uh, is there anybody to share an experience that you realize this was overconfidence like you pushed it too much and then you realize you're still safe i mean there's nothing happened but you still realize that i went too far so if there is somebody who want to share your experience please come in yeah so sajid is here again Yes. so uh, this has happened to me a couple of times and uh, when i got back from beer uh, for the first time and uh, i had done an siv and i had also gone to beer uh, my confidence was way ahead i was like i flew beer what is pavna when i got back to pavna i said what nonsense this is like like you know i was playing around on the ridge and i was doing everything and I went down for landing and uh, i still don't know what happened but i was uh, midway between the takeoff and landing so maybe about 300 feet even less than that i was doing a final approach i was doing a 360 to meet the uh, landing on this side and i was keeping my eyes on the landing and i was uh, the glider was turning and i just looked in front and the glider was in front of me like in front of me and i was like how did this happen and you know that cartoon <laughs> where you know they jump go off the building and they wait for 2 seconds look around yeah, and they fall yeah, yeah, yeah. that's the moment i had like what the hell how, how did the glider come here i was doing yeah. the 360 yeah and then it uh, i fell underneath it it uh, went to a stall came out luckily i was able to uh, land yeah but uh, that clearly shook me and uh, told me that okay you need to calm down you need to so there's a point that i'd like to make and i've made it in the other uh, group also that uh, we've been doing this uh, sessions separately with some other people also before this started yeah and uh, this sort of puts you on the more you talk the like you come as a guest speaker here or you speak over here you talk to other people share your knowledge it sort of takes you to a high so when i have made it a point now that when i go back to flying i'm going to fly two steps lower 
Yeah. Initially, I mean, it's yeah. difficult for me to do that. <laughs> but yeah. I have to keep that in mind that okay, I'm not invincible. But yeah. to fly two steps lower and then go. There was another incident again. Uh, Avi had told me this that Sajid, whenever there is a camera on the on the takeoff, fly two steps lower, and that's mm-hmm. exactly what happened. I actually crash landed. Mm-hmm. So that's that's something that we need to remember. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. So, um, Kanan, uh, the Kanan thinks that it is uh, paragliding is a op- apocalyptic uh, skill. I mean, survival oh. skill. So she is going to talk about on that subject. So now that I've come to like you know fine line between confidence and overconfidence is accidents do happen. Everyone gets away with it. Like for example, Sajid was just saying he had a crash, but he got away with it. I had a crash. I got away with it. But paragliding is a post-apocalyptic survival skill. With that, I mean like we all go through setbacks. We all have. like accidents we nearly miss them but we have to learn from them do not dwell on that negativity where you're like no no now i can't do this like people get stuck into it you have a bad experience and you just keep thinking about it no you have to learn from it what did i do wrong like saji just said flight two steps you know lower yeah like analyze it get back realize take your time off if you need it but do not stay away from your wing for too long because that fear comes in and then it just builds up and my other point is negativity like every time i don't know if you all do it but if i have a bad take off i'm like she had bad take off now my flight is going to be bad and then you just you know do that you keep doing like are 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 and your entire flight you don't realize even if i've done 100 kilometers i'll remember what bad i did no yeah. i won't see what good i did like what did i learn what was the positive thing so that's my point do not okay you did a bad take off okay come down land finish your day and then sit to analyze it why did it go wrong don't spoil the rest of your flight for it if yeah. you're uncomfortable get down there's no reason there's no one to prove that you're macho get down no one cares if you're finding the condition too hot come down there's there's you're not going to change the world just be happy like if you're flying fly the most positive you can do not and firstly negativity with people like if for example sajjo was saying that 1 cm like he was flying a free step don't like if you see those people keep away when you're taking off when you're in a flight make a bubble stay with the friends who are going to motivate you be with the people who want to see you are i'll help her and she needs help i'll go and help not like are she is going to mess up i look at her don't because it will only mess with your head so learn what you're doing analyze it and if you've done something wrong just learn from it do not just be like kari i'm such a bad pilot you're not going to improve you'll only no. you'll start unliking the sport you will be like i don't want to do this this is you'll push yourself away and that's the end you won't be happy you will not have fun and we all paraglide because we love it so i would and i would ask you fun. like ask you here one question is uh when you want to learn something you want to venture into something new which you don't know there is some very basic reasons i mean we go for some very very basic reason we we take up something new and but whereas after going there you learn new things and you keep progressing to somewhere else at one point of a time you even forget why you actually went there okay so in my case when it comes to paragliding when it, when i started doing too much then i realize why am i even doing this like you have flown very long distance why why am i even flying so long what was my basic reason why i have come here i have come here just to relax from what i am doing in my business from my town my busy life i have taken up this for a very simple reason to have some fun right so would you like to close with that would you like to say some words on why it is the most basic is fun having fun i feel like we all say it and it's a core the person who is learning the most is actually having more fun than you 
because if you are enjoying it for example I, like i when i was flying comps and i used to be in macedonia with viz and alok and they would do like goal every day and i would be there piche piche you know one step at a time coming and i used to nag myself and i would be like you know pull yourself down but then i realized i'm not doing this for that i'm not doing this for just like oh i made goal i'm doing this to have fun as well and if i'm not learning then what is the point of spending so much money coming all the way here and just criticizing myself instead learn from it move forward and enjoy it. like after all when i was 12 i did it because i loved it i came back to it because i loved it and i kept going at it because i loved it but if at this point you do not feel this then don't there's no compulsory rule that there is a finish line you have to get to it and that's my last point is pilots you know who want to become independent great we are all here for you we will support you you have questions there is flying stories we are all here but the pilots who want to be in that school who want that you know safe environment they do not want to that's also perfectly fine this is not a competition ki who becomes the next kriegel no it is what you want that is all that matters the rest of the world can just go for it so nice of you and uh, before we close we have a couple of people here uh, one is wish uh, wish is here to ask a question to you oh, hello hi can you hear me where were you we were waiting for you since long time you had no network yeah please go ahead yeah so uh, kanan you mentioned uh, the competition macedonia so i i have a question for you how come i don't see you in any competitions in india so because because you have the potential to probably walk away with the women's cup so what's keeping you so every time like the last year i wasn't there is because i was not planning on doing any comps last year because i had a little bit of a scare myself and i had seen someone i know pass away in a comp so oh, i didn't that, realize that so that put me and i have never spoken to it now so that scared me that shook me and for me like it, as a family after like you know my parents and all and i couldn't deal with it for the longest of time and then when panchgini was going on i was not there and then beer i was not there so of course like i really want to do comps but i was very scared and that's why if you saw i was not improving like i was stuck i was like a bit not stable so that's why i was not doing comps and i wanted to do comps that were just fun like for me i was more focused okay fun like you've seen me in massive right. yeah when we were there and i was on my way that like that stress that time i couldn't handle it like i used to those you know things used to get to me but now right. as i fly better and my like that mental block is not there ki i can't do it like for example i say these points but we all faced it right like we all used to be like oh i am such a bad pilot so for a longest time i used to think that and then when i started acro and my confidence built and i realized oh my god i'm not that bad is when i was like okay i need to start and then corona came so <laughs> yeah hey, i'm, I'm sorry to hear about your friend and uh, i'm happy that you got your confidence back so hope to see you soon thank you wish thank you and um, Uh, Bhushan want to say a couple of words on this subject. Uh, Bhushan, quickly, if you can uh, give a, a short uh, answer or uh, you want to say something, please come in. Hi, uh, hey, uh, hi, Kanan, and hi, uh, hello, everybody. Thank you for uh, bringing out uh, so many aspects of flying, which I'm sure everybody uh, on this call will relate to and uh, will recognize from uh, every single fragment, like. uh i've i haven't been talking much only for the reason that you know everybody including you and sajid and badri and viz and uh, alok have been underlining every single aspect uh, that you know i have uh, followed through i have uh, understood and i have looked at 
including uh, you know uh, the initial stepping out and you know uh, the margin that we try to keep for ourselves what is a good margin uh, do you bite off more than you can chew so, or so why don't why don't you tell us what is, what is missing <laughs> yes more so so uh, you know what i feel is uh, what sajid said makes a lot of sense once you start talking about it uh, there's there comes a point when you actually admit to some mistakes like i i keep on doing all the time uh, like for example uh, uh, one when i started flying uh, independently there was one uh, incident uh, it was almost an incident that happened at pavna i took off uh, like you know being too ambitious and strong wind and ended up being stuck and i had to plan my uh, landing somewhere behind the uh, uh, pavna ridge and that incident sort of you know uh, showed me that yes you are rocking the intermediate syndrome now <laughs> so take a couple of steps down and uh, since then uh, it has been a journey of uh, learning and relearning uh, my limits my margins so i feel keeping the head down and two steps lower all the while uh, helps a lot i think uh, my instructor uh, ganpat sir also uh, told me the same like if you feel uh, you know your heart rate is racing and if you feel something uh, you feel a threat if you perceive a threat as much go two steps down nobody is you know asking you to keep uh, taking steps ahead uh, in the direction of risk and danger all the time so, so you had uh, you had uh, you had a safe, safe landing on the other side of the risk. yeah 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 fortunately <laughs> okay. i i managed it uh, i have a video of it also some day i'll uh, excellent soon excellent I'll, uh, and then put it together so you will can see you know i was uh, at times holding rises and all the classic things that show here and share yeah with us. thank you so we'll much for coming for sure. in i would yeah. like to take the next question next question from um, srikant srikant are you here hi um i'm bhadri can you hear me yeah please go ahead uh, your video srikant yeah, your video I'm... yeah Okay. Anyway, go ahead, please. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, good to hear from you, Kanan. Very happy with the promotion, and be proud of you that you are putting uh, the Indian name in uh, international podiums. So keep it going. My question to you is, uh, what is that you learned in paragliding that the school has not taught, um, especially after you left the school? Say in eighteen months, and you were you thinking, oh, this should they should have taught me in school? What is that? So the biggest learning I had, like the fact that I wasn't in school after eleventh, was dealing with uncertainties. Like in school, we are like, you first finish your tenth, then you do eleventh, then you get a degree, then you'll get a job, and then everything will be fine. but we are not taught ki if this goes wrong what do you do like we are not taught how to deal with setbacks we are not taught how to deal with failure we are only shown the positive side and with paragliding i think i learned how to be fine with that uncertainty like for example i don't know if i'm going to take off and i'm going to make the landing every day some days i will have to land up and i'm just giving this small example is because some days i thought i will become like i was going to study economics and i was like totally planned out career everything was you know there and then i went into paragliding it was very uncertain and with paragliding also and with apart from school it makes you realize how your decisions have to be on point like i could not decide in school what i wanted like now i can say this is what i want but maybe it took me to get out of the system that i can do this like not everyone can take a decision so i was like no maybe i'll try and of course you know you can always go back to it there's no but my basic learning was to learn how to be independent like to know it's fine even when you're alone so and uncertainty how to deal with uncertainty Does it answer uh, Srikant's yeah. question? You have something more to say? Okay. Uh, we will move to next question by Santosh Dal. Santosh Dal, can you switch on your mic and come in? Uh, yes, Padri. I think yeah. Already in the chat, there is a previous question. I guess Rohan is putting and uh, regarding like the previous question, he was asking Srikant like what uh, Kanan has learned out of the paragliding school. what he couldn't or he she thought that 
like she could have learned in the school but later she learned mm-hmm. that was the question but yeah i'll come to my question before that it's not mm-hmm. a question it's like i don't know how many people are there in this uh, uh, conversation whatever we are having how many yeah many year experience i know but there may be people from the school progressing or still just out of the school so we are seeing the good part of all those things because yeah already badri explained like already told about karan but i have also seen her like okay, how daily she was like practicing and this thing we see all these or the alok or i have heard about alok also or many other senior pilots like mm-hmm. how much time these guys put like how much effort they put okay to how much uh, they manage their work to how to give the time for the paragliding and this. those things we should also consider uh, like when we are comparing the other things like it's not only that okay you think that way uh, like in the one year she has reached that level but we need to see that every one year each day how she has put that time for the like for the paragliding so those things also to be considered like who are going out of the school or buying anything or any whatever the all the aspects we have discussed okay so thank you so much and uh, kanan we have a little bit of discussion on the your uh, uh, chat box here is that people are asking what is that new thing did you learn after you have left the school which you think school has you have not learned being in the school well you see why we have a lot of questions for you because you are one of the girl who spent a lot of time in the school so i don't think you would be missing anything from there what is that new thing you have learned so from paragliding school i think i learned so much like i cannot just say one thing i learned very different okay yeah. so for me i'd say like my first point was to become independent and that's what i learned okay like for example when to go when to push when i knew what i was doing it became more easier for so me so you're trying to are you trying to say to become independent is something yes. you have to push yes right that it is something you have to remember yourself that you have to learn you have to push yourself quickly so that you you are in a in an environment even if you are not say not protected still you are safe right like i feel there's nothing different like for example like there's so much theory there's so much competition knowledge you don't learn that in school because that is not necessary for you to know so the reason why it is important to like get out of it if you want to is because there's such a bigger arena than we think about it like i say independent is because now i can go to you know kamsed or i can go to be and i say this condition is good for me i will take off okay. i know what is happening i can judge so all the points i said is what i learned is what i did and i what i slowly slowly progress through okay that's so nice of you and i have one last last question for myself uh at the age of like 14 15 we all want to uh, like pro- at least be programmed to do certain things which is all like you know some many other people have done it before like something like a you know, doing your doctor mba or engineering or a set of preset very safe things and not only that um your classmates you are like you left the school when you are in class 11 12 and you came out where they went to college so it's it's a parallel journey you are you are you have taken a different way and they have taken a different way and how do people look at you your own classmates your own relatives and how did you handle this part that's a really like <laughs> deep point but like so initially everyone called me stupid mm-hmm. and that was fine but what i felt was you have to be a contrarian to achieve something different if no one you know ventured out into this field we would have not been paragliding and of course it's not like great to you know at a point when my friends are getting degrees and they're you know celebrated for what they're doing and here i am doing something you have to live in a gao and i have to fly and there's no medal mm-hmm. or there's nothing but yeah. somehow a degree holder is given more you know if you are knowledge and you are like literate you are devda but that's not true i will say for example my friends for taking like 
my age self i'll feel like i have seen so much more of a life i have experienced i've gone and dealt with humans like that's what i feel like i know how to get my way for example if i'm stuck in a situation i know how to tackle it awesome that is what your school does not teach yeah. your education system does not this is the path and if you go out of it yeah, you don't know what to do yeah so yeah. i feel that also helped me with my father and my mom like there was always negativity the people would come and say what if she dies but my dad would reply but what if she becomes something better than that what if she achieves something more than just a engineering or a doctor degree so if there is positive thoughts as well so that is what i kept myself and i keep myself away from all the negative thing and i do not like if i take off thinking i'm going to die in this flight i might as well die because i'm already dead yeah so that is what i don't like i don't like the fact that like people think paragliding is just a hobby it so many people have made it a career we have so many examples here like on this forum who have made careers out of this and i feel this is a sport which is going to go a long day yeah so um, although we are going uh, a bit long but yeah. there is there we have a couple of more questions uh, guys you think we should attend um, uh, zuel is asking a question please come in hey kanan hi Uh, Kanan, one question to you is: uh, I saw you flying in school, and then you took uh, participation in accuracy, then cross country, and then acro now. So the question is to you: Is uh, at what time uh, you understand that I have to shift from this thing to uh, to other thing? I mean, from uh, schooling to accuracy, then accuracy to competition. What are the key indi- things indicates you? Uh, that i have to make a transition thank you so to your question jewel i feel is when you start getting like when you reach the ceiling of knowledge like when you stop growing when boredom sets in into your flying like i realized that that now when i was flying in like kamshed and all there was nothing interesting i was doing i was just stuck so i felt like why not do an accuracy comp you learn something different I'm not saying that every time I got bored, I tried to do something different. But I was very curious to know about, like, how you said competition. It always intrigued me, and how I came to know about it is because Wiz, you know, he put Panjgani comp out, and it came out in 2017. We were all novices. I don't think any of us had flown any comps before that. Maybe like all the top pilots. but when i came to the arena and i was like there's so much more to do like that's how i found out step by step like first step i found out there's accuracy competition which goes on there is xc competition that goes on and i was like oh i could do that like that was safe for me like i thought accuracy was in my cup of tea i can go into it then i ventured i did it i was enjoyed it but then i was like what next and that what next came because i had that hunger like i was like oh i want to do something more i didn't want to just go from the hill and top like land so that's when i was like that's when 2017 panjgani open came out it was like oh i'll go do this of course you know you can't expect results and all but like that hunger was what led to me doing competition what led to me doing acro like the first time any of us pulled a sat you were like wow like that wow makes you want to do more like that's what happened to me and i'm sure like many of the pilots who fly acro and tj all of them is that curiosity ke, how is this maneuver can i do it so yeah. that is a i challenge myself ki let's try it. and the one thing is try it whether you like it or don't like it is the result but yeah. if you don't try it and you don't explain then you will never know that's yeah. how i got into it and that's why does that answer uh, jewel your question yeah thank you so much for coming in and guys um, thank I you i first i first of all want to uh, we have closed the questions uh, we are going to close the session also in a minute first of all i want to thank uh, kanan's parents 
for say, taking such bold decision and listening to your children i i also have early uh, arao same age uh, uh, baby girl, uh, same age the daughter that to take such kind of a decision believing in your daughter and giving her such kind of a freedom and i'm sure she is going to set a trend for the upcoming uh, generation she is going to excel really well thank you so much uh, kanan can you take their names my parents yeah yeah okay my dad manoj thakur my mom ranjana thakur thank you both manoj and ranjana thakur ji thank you so much and uh, uh, before i close this session uh, for two hour non stop experience sharing of the school kanan thank you so much trust me this video record will be seen by many many upcoming pilots as a reference and they will learn a lot from this and uh, on behalf of flying stories we all wish you good luck and you will really really go to a far distance where you will set a trend many people will follow you the next generation thanks to the daughter of india thank you all for coming thank you so much thank you guys thank you guys